Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Justin and Lizzie from Third Space, and we're here again for another week of our long running Turning Towards Life conversation. And you are so, so welcome to be with us wherever you are. Maybe you're with us live. Some people um, join us live on a Sunday morning UK time in our Facebook group, which you are very welcome to join. But if you're not with us live, on Sunday morning, the 14th of May in 2023, you might be watching on Turning Towards Dot Life or listening on a podcast or something else. Who knows when? Maybe in 2023 or but maybe decades into the, the times after this. And whenever and wherever you are, you are so welcome to be with us. And Lizzie, I'm feeling very, very glad to be here with you this morning. And um, you'll know this because... Uh, we are in different parts of the world this morning, and I am in Italy with a group of people who um, teach the same body of coaching work um, that we do. And I was explaining to everyone whilst we were sitting around breakfast, Lizzie, how uh, we've never missed a week doing this in the five and a half and a bit more years. We've always found a way to speak and um, be engaged in this practice. And what a thing it is to have practice like this. I keep on noticing what a life, life defining commitment, mm. speaking with you and sharing this with many, many people is. So I'm very glad to have practice like this mm. and um, glad that you're here and that you've brought us the source that you've brought us. Thank you. Mm. Thanks, Justin. Well, I'm in my ordinary place and feeling very grateful for you kind of reminding us of the you said life-defining commitment I think that really is true like this is a shape that now belongs in my life and everybody knows about and supports me with and and that's that's that's, that's a thing so I just want to um I want to appreciate that as well and how bonkers it is that it's been as long as it's been and it feels like a flash kind of thing it's amazing so the source today is a very, very, very wonderful person called Ingrid, Ingrid Goff Madoff. And I met Ingrid a really long time ago now. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I was, I was learning with her in some workshops and I remember she kind of very humbly, I don't know, I, I don't even know if she told me about her poetry or just discovered that she was a poet through someone else or something. And this little beauty is from a wonderful book that I'm holding up now, if you're listening on uh, Spotify or something, it's called Befriending the Soul, Poetry, Prose, Quotations and Queries to Celebrate the Loving Essence of Being. And it's by Ingrid Goff Madoff. And it's such a kind of, you know, those books that you hold and you think, oh yeah, this is like one of those rare ones. Like it doesn't look like it's been printed a thousand trillion times. It feels like itself. And I remember opening it and just feeling like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this is like complete gold. And uh, she's also got other books as well. And you can just Google her and <clears throat> find out more about her. I really encourage that. It's really beautiful, all of her poems. And this one particularly spoke to me. And I wanted to bring it here so that we could find, in some way, find the language for why it speaks to me. I think that's what happens to me, Justin. We bring a source and I think, oh, and all this stuff happens inside me, but I don't have outside language for it yet. And then when we get together, the outside language piece happens. And then I feel like I can truly receive what it is that is being gifted me through the source. So... If you haven't been here with us before, just to say you can find the source in the show notes, you can find it on our website, which is turningtowards.life, and you can find it always on a Friday before the Sunday broadcast on, in, in our Facebook group, if you want to, to read alongside us in any way. <clears throat> so this poem be read by me and then Justin, and then we will see where the conversation takes us, as we always do. So here we go. People ask me why I'm happy. What can I say? 
I stopped trying to be the sharpest tool in the shed. Once I gave that up, I could rest in all this love. Relaxed, I opened the door, stepped out and discovered the whole bliss garden I'd been missing. Thank you, Lizzie. People ask me why I am happy. What can I say? I stopped trying to be the sharpest tool in the shed. Once I gave that up, I could rest in all this love. Relaxed, I opened the door, stepped out and discovered the whole bliss garden I'd been missing. Justin. Oh my goodness. Well, the biggest experience I have as I listen to that from you, Justin, and for me is relief and joy. Because I think somehow <clears throat> in all different ways, obvious, overt, and also subtle and kind of implicit, I feel like there's always this message around that's just always there, that being the sharpest tool in the shed, being the most intelligent or switched on or having your life together or being just fine is a kind of implicit expectation or something that both I have on myself, but also I think like systems have on the people inside of them in some way, which is obviously all, all made by all of us as individuals. I feel like when I read this poem, I get to kind of realise that there's so much more to a human being, to this human being, than being the one who knows or being the one who has decided that this is the answer to something or that is particularly intelligent in a certainly kind of societal, acceptable way. And I feel so glad that this is a possibility in the world. It's, it's like without this kind of poem, without someone saying this, I think it's so possible to be, for me to be completely kind of hoodwinked into that being where my value would come from, being the sharpest tool in the shed, in whatever system I'm in, whether it's teaching or working or being a parent or a, a, a neighbour or something, but that that's why I would be approved of, that's why I would be accepted that's why I would be admired that's why I would be <clears throat> wanted and so to feel into this bliss garden and that I can relax and that without this there's loads of some of something called love to rest in that Ingrid's suggesting I feel so grateful for that my goodness it's way more than being the sharpest tool in the shed and how much have I tried to be the sharpest tool in the shed? And it's never really worked, if I'm honest. So, you know, thank goodness there's another way. <laughs> so much here, isn't there, in Ingrid's short poem. Um, I'm sure... Uh, I'm not unique and I'm clearly not because you've just been talking about your experience of this, yeah. Lizzie. Um, I'm not unique in having um, at various times in my life <clears throat> and sometimes still now when I don't realize that's what I'm doing. And I think this is, this poem is a, uh, for me anyway, not a one, not, not like a one-off event of sort of starting to think about all the time all the ways I've discovered myself trying to be the sharpest tool in the shed and put them down and then found out that there's often another one sort of where I think I'm done with that. And then, and then here it is, <laughs> but I've had lots of practice trying to be the sharpest tool in the shed. And um, certainly in a, in an education system, the one that I grew up through, which then does so much to, you know, if an if part of an education system is trying to, if this is what it's about, which I'm not always sure it is, but, is um, educating us not only just about the things we're learning, but also about uh, ways of being in the world, which then 
throws us on a trajectory that we might take up for a very, very long time. Our eye in that system um, was blessed with the gifts and the curse of being uh, able to say of myself, I'm one of the sharpest tools in the shed, like academic things haven't been difficult. And, mm. and what, uh, what a curse I can see that that as a, as a life defining commitment is for everyone. So for anyone who's being rewarded by that system, which I often was, um, it disconnects us from all of our other faculties and all of our other capacities. Mm. I got known for being academically intelligent, but not for anything else. And, and once I got known that way, um, I was just thinking the other day, actually, I was really frightened of the kids at school who were playful, who, who uh, didn't do exactly as they were told who, you know, who branched out in different ways, who challenged teachers, who I was terrified of them. And actually now I, I think in reading this poem and talking to you, I think I was terrifying, terrified of them because of what a threat they were to the sort of sense of safety I had managed to build for myself by playing along with a system that would reward me for being sharper one, you know, by, by the definition of the system, I don't mean anything specific about me so the idea that I might be mischievous or uh you know anything that didn't keep me in that safe place that the system had given me was ter was terrifying and, I, and it just hadn't occurred to me in reading this earlier this week Lizzie that there's the there's the difficulty any of us have in comparing ourselves with other people and trying to climb something that's maybe not ours to climb or isn't the most important thing and the, the constant life of looking over our shoulder or if you're defined by a system to be far off being the sharpest one all the ways in which you get downtrodden and dismissed and there's all of that obvious suffering that comes from a comparative system that's given to us and that we, should, that we then take up inside us but there's also everything that we have to leave out in order to play along in that system. Mm. Mm. Like I had to leave out my mischievousness, which I've come to learn much, much later in life and which is still a lot of learning for me because of how I kept it in check in order to, you know, in order to go along with this. And then there are other people I know who I was at school with who carried into their adult lives, knowing their mischievousness, but not knowing their own intelligence because They'd been told that they weren't the sharpest tool in the shed, but then that was by, by some definition, that was the only, the only thing that was of value. So as a, as a, as a feeling into this, um, what's, what becomes really clear to me is that the, the systems that set us up to compete with one another in that way, and it may serve the system well, the intents of the system well, not, not, I don't think in a holistic way to, to be this way. They, they cost us so much. And, um, and then we get into the personal part that Ingrid's writing about, which is that once you're carrying it in whatever way, the effort to be, to constantly try to be, and I think, I think this, this word sharpest tool in the shed, not I'm working on my own intelligence or my own creative creativity, my capacity, but I'm going to be the sharpest tool in the shed. Uh, it's a it's a genuine prison to live in the midst of, but also one that many of us have taken to be the most important thing we could do. So of course, once we give it up, we perhaps find out that. Um, the world actually isn't made of all the ways we fall short compared to one another. It's made of something else. I'm not sure what you're saying, because I think I was one of the people you would have been terrified of. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that didn't stop me being subject, though, to this thing. <clears throat> and um, funnily enough, though, I wouldn't have been terrified of you. I would have been very interested in you because it's mm. like, I remember that people in my school, I just used to be like, how do you do that? 
I've got no idea how you um, write a history paper that long and that coherently and know so many things in your brain when you sit down to do an exam. Like I, you know, I just didn't understand how that could possibly be possible. And so I still don't actually, I remember that, th- that history thing. I was like, <laughs> you know, th- things felt very out of my reach. Um, like physics, for example, you know, I mean, I would sit in the lesson, I'd be like, <laughs> I've often been missing something, literally missing something, because I do not know what is going on here. And plenty of people did. So it's, it's very, it's a funny thing going to school where like all of the range of things are on offer and some things you know what's going on and some things you haven't got a clue and other people know everything about everything that's going on. But I, I, I wasn't one of those people. And so mischief was, yeah a way of enjoying myself in an environment that wasn't really geared up for me. <laughs> so it makes sense, like, to, to do something that has you enjoy yourself rather than just feel kind of left out and tortured the whole time. Um, but even if, even if I wasn't that, that academic person who could feel like and work towards being the sharpest tool in the shed, um, I still feel and have felt very subject to it. Like it works in any environment you go to. It's not just academia. It's like being the best teacher of something or the best speaker or the best, I don't know, chef. I still feel it all the time. And the giving up of whatever that is in whatever environment we're in seems to bring as I said like a profound kind of relief that I don't have to be a gourmet chef I don't have to be perfect mother I don't have to be (laughs) because it's like it's such a narrow it's such a narrow way to perceive the world and I don't have to do that even no matter how sucked in and and maybe how uh, how inadequate I might feel in a moment to have this kind of antidote that says, oh yes, that's the, look, there we are. You're making that little mistake again, that you need to be like this person or better than this person or have more or be more or have more expertise or something. It's just not the place to look in order to bring your gifts to the world. And I feel very, particularly at the moment, very committed to this because I do think, like you said, it, if, if I were to live like this, I would be chopping off so much of me. And actually what a much more interesting conversation is, is if I choose to be conscious of this and see what else is here of me, like then I start to get interested in myself. <laughs> then I think, oh, well, what is else here other than this trying really hard and efforting and trying to make sure that I know everything and I'm organized and I've got everything together and whatever, what, what else is here? And then I get really interested about what what could be born and what what I could be, what kind of way of being I might have in the world and what kind of invitation that might be to other people too. Because we all we're all so varied, we're all so different. And, you know, how can I be a welcome to the sharpest tool in the shed by whatever standard in whatever environment and also be a welcome to the mischief makers and a welcome to the. The social people and the people who find it difficult to communicate with other people like like goodness knows what things we could think of 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 attributes and kinds of people to include but I feel like this is also a a way of looking at what can be included rather than how to exclude myself from everything oh gosh there's so much here Lizzie and listening to you I was, um, yeah, I was beginning to think along a, a related line, which is that we'd been talking about school and sort of academic things, that that definition of sharpest. But like you say, really this dynamic is being the somethingest something in the something, that, that, that stem, <laughs> you could put lots of things in there, um, could be applied to almost anywhere in life where, you know, I look at other people who are fathers and can compare my fathering with them or I as uh, we navigate uh, in my family our 
parents growing older, I look at my brothers and I could try and be the somethingest brother in the something. And, um, and like, like you were just saying about um, how, once we're in that comparison, whatever kind it is, how much it misses out of everyone that you said something that really struck me that that when we're with if you if you just buy for a moment the possibility that there is such a thing as the sharpest tool in the shed when it comes to people if i just i'm not sure there is but if i you know if i step into a room with someone who is teaching physics and really understands physics and the all that's going on for me is i'm now not the sharpest one i've got to be that i miss mm. so much about them Mm -hmm. because my way of relating to that person is by competition and comparison and striving mm -hmm. for all the things that I'm not so then it becomes yeah. about me yes and it misses out so much of me and I, I was thinking um I'm reading a lovely book which will I'll probably bring a source from another week called Sand Talk and in Sand Talk the the author says that the biggest the, the most destructive force in the world is the force of I am better or more worthy than you and its and its counterpart that that's the one that's the most poisonous second second rung poisonousness and still is I'm not as worthy as you mm. second rung only in the sense that we mostly do that to ourselves and not do it to other people the first one yeah but both they're both and and that's where I think Ingrid's the the genius of this wonderful poem is that bound up in that trying to be the sharpest or being the sharpest involves not only comparisons between us and other people but involves judgments of other people as well so we're losing like you were saying we're losing ourselves and others all the time when we're doing that no wonder yeah. it's hard to open the door and step out and discover uh, all this love mm -hmm. And I was just, your talking really helped me. Um, you'll know this because I'm, I'm in a position in a community that I'm deeply involved in where I have a position of responsibility where I'm often called upon to answer questions about things that are happening or chairing meetings. Or, and I was thinking whilst you were talking about how, what we miss in ourselves, how often when, say, a question that I can't answer comes my way, I'll have without knowing it in my head a comparison with I ought to be someone different than the one I am I ought to be the person who can answer the question yeah. and then I lose contact with myself and I fumble and I but but what if I could say to myself in the way that Ingrid's inviting I'll stop trying to be anyone other than the one that I am mm -hmm. and I have here whatever I have you know I can learn I can always learn things and I want to learn things but right now when somebody asks me what's the plan for this or how are you taking care of this or and I don't know the answer, instead of comparing myself to an imaginary sharpest tool, I can feel into my own love and my own care and my own wisdom and my own capacity and my own not knowing. And I could, I could much more speak to them from this place of the second part of the poem with all of my mischievousness and, and calmness. And then I could say to them much more straightforwardly, I, I don't know the answer to your question. And here's what I'll do rather than I have to be someone other than the one that I am mm. making me think Justin as well like when we're in positions of responsibility and we have power in any system how important it is for there to be diversity of power source of power holding humans so that people can find their own uh, I don't know energetic way in those examples you know if, if if i'm in a system where all i can see is super academic people doing the work that i would love to do one day it's so easy for me to go oh well, that's I, I can i can't do it then that's not for me that that's never going to happen but if i can find somebody further along the path who sits next to them maybe who does it differently and has a different way I can find permission and possibility. And so however hard this is to step out of the sharpest tool in the shed thing, it feels so important to do it so that we can find the qualities that can also take us into positions of responsibility and influence, if you like. 
and and then be examples for people who aren't um the way that society is ordinarily held things so i feel that's i don't know it just feels like such an important theme for me at the moment because i i still feel so kind of i don't know i suppose different to the to the general i don't know the general people who know what they're doing and know seem to know what they're doing seem to have it all together and can do things well and perfectly and organizedly and everything but i'm really much more committed these days to going well there are other ways i feel really convinced of that and that i don't have to conform to something and i'm i can i can be a welcome for that which has been historically celebrated and i can add lots more in there so that many more people feel like they could step up towards things and it feels really important and and i wonder then what world we create by undoing people's expectations of of what that is because I, i think it's it's very heavily ingrained in us all and so i remember justin when i went to a program once and there was a, a woman teaching us and she was so all over the shop and so kind of wild. And she would say we'd be back at the one time and then she forgot and it was another time. And, you know, all this stuff went on and all of my stuff was coming up of like, well, how, you know, this is ridiculous. We can't even turn up on the same time. And, you know, this, what are our agreements? And, you know, and she was so undefended and so able to do the thing that she was intending to do in spite of all of the kind of untogetherness that I suddenly thought, oh my gosh, there's so many ways to do this. Like this has been amusing because it's been so disheveled, but I've learned loads. And that's what I came here for was learning. So who am I to say that this could have been more organized or it could have been more uh, together or something. And that kind of wildness in, in the place I'm now, I'm not sure I could stretch to that kind of wildness if I was responsible for a space and people being in it and feeling safe and all those kind of things. But it did kind of open my realms of what's possible, given how much I still learned, even though all those standards that I had on it were, were unmet. And so I think it's um, it seems really important to me that we have these experiences of not sharpest tool in the shedness but be really conscious of what we're still receiving, even though the tool isn't the sharpest one. I am. I really appreciate the way this conversation has taken a turn towards the political in the sense that one way of reading and one true way of reading Ingrid's words are it's sort of something very personal to do with our own our own process and our own development and of course it is you know when we learn to give up comparison and all of those kind of things but i'm i'm reading again because of what you're saying and what you're bringing lizzie in the uh, reading differently the second part of um ingrid's work where here once i gave that up i could rest in all this love and step out and discover the whole bliss garden i've been missing one reading of that my first reading of it was a sort of transcendent sense of the world as a whole. You know, how could I have missed that the world was this beautiful? But when I hear you talk about yourself and about this teacher, I also want to read it another way, which is to say, look at who I've been missing because mm. of this dynamic. Mm. Because, because the, 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 what I think you were talking about in a way was in any culture, I'm, I can't imagine there's any culture that doesn't have this um, phenomenon in it there are culturally um uh, um imbued in the culture senses of what it is to be the sharpest tool in the shed in that culture and that that definition then rewards certain people and excludes other people but also has the people who are being rewarded exclude lots of themselves in the way that we were we were talking about and i know uh i know one of the things about being around you for me is 
um, yes, I learned to write good essays and I can do physics. And, you know, the things that you talked about um, were not your thing when you were learning as a younger person. I get to be with you and I, and I constantly get reminded of how much uh, uh, wisdom and love and straightforwardness it has been harder for me to be in contact with that I find in you. And the definitions of sharpest whatever that are given to by the culture don't make any sense in that context. I get to be with you and I find again and again and again so much in myself that I haven't paid attention to that you have and what a gift it is. And that's what we, that's what we can do for one another. And then you meet a teacher who's, who's, um, uh, you know, some parts of what she's up to might be difficult for people and some parts might be wonderful, but, but clearly, and not but, clearly as a whole, she's a person who is embodying something that really matters, a possibility that really matters in the world that doesn't, so the, the definitions of sharpest tool in the something that our culture gives us often are not, they are highly selective, they serve some and not others, they very often don't serve even the people who are apparently benefiting from being being the ones that fit into that mold and they exclude so much of the wisdom and love and creativity and joy and truth that we desperately need um, in order to flourish together all of that I heard in what you were saying both about yourself and about the teacher and I um, gosh, how we need, how it will help us not to give up. I can hear in me the, the, the part that keeps that dynamic going that goes, and it's just a part of me, so I want to speak for the part, not from it. And the part goes, yes, but if we didn't have that, those kind of standards, everything would fall apart and, and the society. So, of course, what's really called for at the bottom of this is what Ingrid talks about is love and great care for one another. And then we need to work to set aside our uh, ways of labeling ourselves and one another by our adherence to a very, very narrow set of values of what makes a, a worthy person or a good person, because gosh, what we're, what we're all missing out on. My goodness. Well, I'm just again, returning to Ingrid and the gift of this really beautiful short potent excellent invitation and i want to appreciate ingrid if you're ever getting to listen to this um just appreciate you for who you are and i think this poem was written ages ago now as well and i, I love that this endurance in it and timelessness and justin thank you i i, I was musing yesterday at the kind of massive differences between us and the essential similarities between us I was walking with my sister and we were just talking about that and I feel so grateful that just just as I'm talking about with the diversity diversity thing I feel like in any given situation together we can see more than separately together we can feel more sense more wonder more at the world than we could just on our own. And, and, and the more diverse you are, the bigger the gap there is, the more gap there is to be filled in the conversation kind of thing. So this, this whole thing of turning towards life is such a, a beautiful example of what's possible when difference becomes in relationship. And imagining us at school together, <laughs> you telling me what the hell's going on in physics and me helping you enjoy yourself a bit. You know what I mean? Like it, it could be, it is a match made in heaven really, yeah. but it, but it would have to be, there would have to be something that bound us in order for that to be true. Otherwise you'd be in the library and I'd be in the toilets, you know, doing something bad. So I feel like what binds us together makes everything so interesting and, and gift filled. And I'm, I feel so grateful for that. And yeah, it's still quite mysterious to me what's going on that that's all possible. I don't, I, don't, I don't think we have a conscious something that makes us, I mean, there must be lots of conscious something that makes us how we're being with one another, but I don't really have a 
language for that. It's very mysterious to me, but it's very present and makes a hell of a lot possible in the world. To have you sitting next to me is very different than having you not sitting next to me in any situation. So I feel like we're an example to me of where difference is, makes things robust, not separating or warring or cross with each other or, um, you know, filled with disdain or how could you possibly be like that? But it's like we can be in relationship and be different and really beautiful things get to be born and seen and welcomed because of it. So I'm really very, very grateful for that, particularly now, in this moment. And I think that's probably a time for us to end. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you again, Ingrid. And uh, we'll be back next week on Sunday. And Justin, you'll be back in your normal place with your books behind you and your blue shelves for us all. They're green. Nice. But they changed. Yeah, they were, they were blue for years, Lizzie, but they're green now. I'll be back with my green shelves. I've noticed that they've changed. <laughs> I'm going to go back and look at some videos. Yeah, have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I have to lead by saying one thing, which is, um, yeah. Lizzie, you have posted the most amazing picture on in our Facebook group to go with this poem. The picture you've chosen says, photo credit by Lizzie, picture of a house that Vesper built, yeah. which I'm looking at now, this house made of wood beautifully and artfully piled on top of one another to make a house and this will be the picture that will go with the um on turning towards dot life if you go and find this episode which will i don't know what it'll be called but it's uh episode 192 or 193 and it'll go on the web page to go with the with the audio podcast i just really want to celebrate vespers um building uh, what a wonder it is and because not everybody sees the pictures if you just listen on spotify yes, or something you might not find your way to see the images there's an image that goes with every it seems the perfect 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 image to go with what we've been talking about um so i didn't want people to miss out on it thanks justin oh okay everyone we'll see you next sunday thanks everyone bye <laughs>